everyone. Welcome to Crafting with the Crafty Chick. So good to have everybody here with me today. This is fun to see what you guys are up to on the chat. So can everybody hear me good? Okay, Jimmy, I'm on now. Let me know if you can see me. Okay, thank you everyone. Welcome, welcome. I thank you for your patience, but I have a couple of announcements I wanted to make real quick. Um, first off, I wanted to thank Donna for delivering everybody's craft kit. Really, really appreciate that. Um, and I apologize, you guys. Not all of your projects were in these clear sleeve bags. I ran out and had to order some more. Um, so, for those of you who have asked me, you guys can keep these bags or throw them away. I do not want them back. I buy them in bulk. Um, so you guys can do whatever you want to with those. Hey, Jimmy, are you able to, to see everything on the video? Can anybody see my hand and the paper, the DSP that I have in front of me? I think a couple of you are not seeing the paper. Okay, Linda says yes. Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure... I want to make sure everybody is in. It's going through. It's working. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Mom. Appreciate that. Anyway, um, so the other thing that I wanted to mention is last week's Stampin' Up's retiring list came out. And wow, there was a lot of things on the retiring list that I did not think was um, going to retire. And one of those things is our embossing buddy that we use, as well as our piercing mat. Um, so uh, I have ordered a couple extra piercing mats. If anybody wants one, just let me know. Um, I was afraid they were going to sell out. I don't know about you, but I use mine all the time. Um, the new catalog demonstrators um, should be getting a complimentary catalog in the mail. And next week is our pre-order. I am hoping to be able to order catalogs and um, we'll get those distributed out to you guys as soon as I get them. Okay. Bear with me, I'm also trying to read the comments as well, just to keep up with what's going on. Um, one of the other things is I am throwing out the idea of doing kits twice a month. Once in the beginning of the month and once at the end of the month. And I just want to know your feedback on that. And then that gets us together twice a month. How fun would that be? Um, so let me know what your thoughts are on that. and. Because I have plenty of free time at the moment to craft. Um, in a couple of weeks, I have my batch of chicks coming. So my crafting time would be a little less for a little while. Um, so excited, though, and I will keep you up to date on that. Um, okay, so one of the things I want to show you guys is in your kit, this set is all from the Ornate Garden um, Suite. And the DSP I absolutely love. So I just want to show you guys some of the paper that come with this set. Because um, we're going to be doing several projects of this in the future as well. But some of them just have this really pretty foil imagery on them. 
and the daisies, there's quite a few daisies, which this paper is so pretty. I cannot stop playing with this, you guys. I have not made anything with this side just yet. Does anybody else have this paper yet? These flowers are so pretty. And then the other side of this one is a gold foil. There's little pink flowers. This one I had a harder time with because the pattern is really, really busy. I have a few samples um, that I will show you. This paper is gold foil also. So I have some samples. I've been making cards with this set and I will show you guys those here in a minute. And then we'll get started on crafting and making our projects. This side is also gold foil as well. And then the last one, and this is all daisies. Isn't that pretty? So this yellow right here is a new in color and this color is called Bumblebee. So I'm really excited to see those in person. And here's the other side of that one, which is gold foil also. Isn't that pretty paper, you guys? This is my third pack of this paper. I don't think I need to be hoarding any more paper. We need to use it, right? I think my husband would agree. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to show you guys the samples of some of the cards that I've made with this Ornate Garden DSP. Now this one is not a Crafty Trick original. This one I cased off of Pinterest. Uh, but it was just so pretty and I, I didn't want to change anything about it. Um, but I knew I had to case it. The only thing I don't like is I wish the set had a die to cut these flowers out. You have to fussy cut them. And there's that one. And this one, I did some coloring with the Stampin' Blends, and this one is one of the gold foil designs as well, and I colored all of that background with the Stampin' Blend. This, thank you, is heat embossed in gold, and that sentiment is from the Ornate Garden Suite. And this one is also one of the daisy background with the gold. This die along here, this cut, is also one of the dies in the Ornate Garden Suite. And I also use Stampin' Blend to color the daisies. So you guys can tell what I've been doing around here. Here's another one that I did with that daisy paper. This one might be a project that we might make in the next month or two. This one I made last night. And this sentiment also is part of the Ornate Garden stamp set. And these flowers are fussy cut out. Have to do one at a time. <laughs> and this last one, this is that busy paper I, I really struggled with. I told you guys I really had a hard time. And at first I had heat embossed in white, this sentiment. But I wanted to cover it because behind this die it's really stark white and this embossed is not quite as stark so I added something to really just kind of pop. So that's what I've been doing you guys. Having some crafting fun. Okay so real quick I'm going to just show you guys the sample of we, what we are making today and then we'll get started with one of the card projects first. Um, so like you guys have all your packaging. So one card is going to be this daisy. The or these are all from the Ornate Garden Suite. And so we're going to make this one today. I'm going to open this up so you guys can see. Inside I have stamped a daisy and colored that in. So I'm just showing you real quick what we're making today so you can kind of have a little visual. And then we're doing this one. 
this embossing folder is really pretty from the Ornate Garden Suite as well. Then, these ones are my absolute favorite. These projects today are all Crafty Trick Originals. But this one I absolutely just love. Simple, but so elegant. Um, the one thing on these, the gold pieces are very delicate. It's go the gold foil paper. I will show you guys, because there's several different sizes, and I will show you which ones we need to use. And then how to make these flowers that are also part of the dies of the Ornate Garden Suite. This one I made for Mother's Day, because we, that day is coming, and we all need cards for, for our special moms. And then the other project we're going to make is this little gift bag that coordinates with our Mother's Day cards. We can give these together or give this separate as something else. And so I'm just showing you this is a little gift bag. I'm, my supplies are in here, so I'm sorry. But this is big enough to hold a gift card or a small bar of soap. And I'm going to turn this around for you guys to see. And this one I will be demonstrating to you guys to show you how to put this together and how to make this. So this is what we're making today. Um, and so I think we're ready to get started. Everybody does need to have scissors, a bone folder, um, and then whatever adhesive you use. I'm just going to use my mono glue. And per Donna's recommendation, from last time, because I had glue all over my fingers, my glue eraser, and these beautiful little boxes that Jimmy had made for, for us. And I have both of my glue erasers in here. So if you have one, if you get glue on your fingers, this is a great thing to have. Um, you will also need dimensionals, because we will need these as well. And I didn't bring my glue dot. Do you need glue dot? Sorry, gotta get my glue dots out here. And I thought I was all prepared. Ha, huh, that's a laugh. Okay, so you need glue dots. Okay, so I'm gonna set this off to the side. And I think we're gonna get started with the daisy card first. So get your packet out for your daisy card. So I have all my supplies here and I'm going to pull everything out. So, oh yeah, I was going to demonstrate something on this for you guys. Let me grab the big shot because I have to show you how this part works. I'm just bringing the big shot in real quick here and I want to show you there's a die that comes with this ornate garden um, and it's going to be so here's some of the dies that come this is one of the sets that comes within this suite and you have multiple frames these are really pretty I've used all of these except for this one in the middle so this one is the longest rectangle one. And so when you die cut it out, this is what it looks like. And as you can see, there's holes all around the border on all four sides. This is really pretty. But for a card, how do you turn this into this? I'm going to show you. This is really cool. And Daryl actually helped with this one. How cool is he? Okay, so I'm just going to show you. Let me bring this in a little bit more so you guys can see. Okay, let me read 
comments really quick. So, Mom, what size glue dots we need are just mini or small? And those are going to be for the gold flowers that we use on this card. Is what you need glue dots for. Okay. So, let's see if you guys can't see this a little bit better here. Okay, so like I said, I've already die cut this out, but I'm going to show you how we make it smaller. And so this is a smaller one, which is three and three eight inches. So basically, you can pre-measure this ahead of time, um, but what we're gonna do is you just take your die, and here's the other thing that, this is what Daryl taught me, is that you put it where you want it and you line it up but then the die itself just clicks into place like it finds the hole sometimes you might have to guide it but it just clicks into place and so then you know you're kind of locked in um super cool that we can do that i had no idea and so i'm just testing sometimes you have to just mess with it a little bit Okay, hang on just a minute, sorry. <laughs> Bear with me here. Okay, actually had to turn it around. I'm not getting this right, hang on. <laughs> Do I have to have Daryl come in here? How sad is that? Just crafty chick here, come on. I'm just trying to get this locked in. And this is a time you guys can get your, your beverage of choice or get your chocolate out while you're watching before we start crafting. I'm getting so turned around. See, this is raw. This is real. This is live. This is life. Come on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I've got it. So... Just real quick, I'm just going to show you. I'm just trying to get this locked in place now. Okay, now we are locked in. And so now I'm just going to run this through. It's a big shot. Okay. So, and you do have an extra piece. But then, voila, you guys. You can make it shorter now. You do have to punch out the dies with the holes. And so I do need to punch those out. But that's basically how you can get a big long piece and make it smaller to whatever size you want. So how fun is that? Because sometimes we don't want something this long on a card. And you can always use this piece that you cut off for a scrap or a tag or whatever. Okay, I'm going to put this away. Okay, so now, um, something else I want to show you. I assure you guys, every project I make does not always come out perfect. So, what I just was telling you, if you do not allow that die to click into its place, if you do not line it up, then this is what you end up with, jagged edges, when it's supposed to be nice circles all the way around so that's my first mistake but so that's when i had daryl come and help me and we got this perfectly lined into place okay so if you guys end up and get those dies just keep that in mind you can make it whatever size you want okay so for this daisy card in your packet you have all of these pieces so ready to go and so I'm just going to show you what I did. 
You guys can probably pretty much figure this out. So I'm going to glue this piece onto Calypso Coral. So you're just going to map these two together and then I'm going to glue the back of this and adhere to our card base. So we're going to do that real quick right now. You don't need a lot of glue. I just go around the outer edge or whatever adhesive you want to use. I'm just going to attach that piece. And I have to tell you, terracotta tile and calypso coral are very close in color. You have to really, if you get them mixed up or have both open packages on your desk, it can be hard to get them mixed up. So just an FYI, because both of those colors coordinate with this sweets. So now I'm gluing this piece onto my card base. Make sure that you have the fold on the right end of what you want. And just attach that to your base. Okay, and then this piece gets attached to your embossed piece, and I'm just going to use glue on that. Now when you do that, do not push down too tight. You will end up and push out um, your embossed. Now this is raised up, and so when you push on it, you're actually like recessing it. So we're going to glue this piece onto our embossed piece now. Oh, I should mention, before you do that, make sure all of your holes are punched out. In the die, when you die cut them out, most of them pop out, but sometimes you might get a few that just need additional um, assistance. And so now I'm just going to glue this onto this piece. Okay, and then we're going to put four dimensionals on the back of the embossed piece. So grab your dimensionals. And you guys, when I've used up all of my regular dimensionals, then I start cutting up the end pieces and I use the whole thing. None of this goes to waste. So if you guys have not been using your end pieces, Start cutting them and use them up. Really get more bang for your buck. So I'm just cutting those into pieces. And so I'm just putting a dimensional on each corner. And then peel the backing off of the dimensionals. Okay, come on, fingernails. Speaking of fingernails, Danielle and I, we were going to paint nails yesterday and time got away. I had a color picked out. What color do you think I had picked out, you guys? Kind of bold for me, but I think it would have been fun maybe next time. Not to mention I broke this nail last night and it was long. Okay. Once you have your backings peeled off of your dimensionals, you can now attach this piece. And I just try to center it in the middle of the card. And there we go. There we have our daisy card. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I didn't stamp my daisy flower. Well, I hope all of you guys have the daisy in yours. I think I just forgot to stamp it in mine. Please let me know if anybody doesn't have the daisy and, and uh, we can get you taken care of with that. Okay, so let me double check my notes here. See, this is all my notes about the card. What colors I use, what color blend I use. So the blends that I use, so remember this yellow is a new in color called Bumblebee. 
I used a Dark So Saffron blend, and it's almost like an identical match. Um, and then this is our Dark Old Olive that I used on the leaves and the stem. Okay, uh, oh, yes, Donna, this is Terracotta Tile, is what color we used on this card today. Okay, so that's that one. You put all this back together. Okay. And then the next card we're going to do is this one. I can't remember, you guys, if I fussy cut this piece out for you guys or not. So either you're going to have a piece that looks like this or like this. You guys let me know what did you get because I don't remember. Take these pieces out. So this card, um, okay, that's just the colors of the Stampin' Blend, what I used to color this. Um, so on this flower here, you guys see it's two different colors, and that one is Calypso Coral, both light and dark. And then this one is, I thought it was Balmy Blue, dark Balmy Blue, and then the darker blue around is Night of Navy. Then the daisies. This is daffodil, or this is crushed curry, and this is light daffodil delight. And then on the leaves, I did granny apple green, light granny apple green, um, and then kind of went over. If you look closely along the veins of the leaves, I highlighted those in the dark um, granny apple green. So that's how I colored those with the Stampin' Blends. Heat embossed in white. Oh, terracotta. I get it now. The nail color. <laughs> that would be really, really bold. Coil. Um, I might even have a color similar to that. Now, this is like a purple. Like, uh, I don't even know what color to call it. Kind of somewhere in between this purple and dark. But it's got a sparkle in it. And it's... I usually don't wear dark colors, um, but it's fun to try something new and different. So, maybe next time you guys will see me with purple nails. How fun would that be? Okay, so, how fun, you guys guessing. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and so we have this piece here, the um, emboss. Embossing folder comes from the Ornate Garden, but as you can see along the edge, we have that beautiful border. That is also from one of the dies in this set. And where are we on this piece? Do, do you guys have it on a piece of white, or does it doesn't look like this? So the reason I'm asking is if you guys have it on a piece of white, we need to fussy cut it out. I have this upside down. There we go. And so basically, I left a white border around the whole thing just like when we use our dyes we usually have a white border around the flowers or whatever we're cutting so if you guys want to take a minute if your flower piece looks like this go ahead and fussy cut it out so it looks like this and then you have this piece this sphinx is heat embossed in gold and um this is another one of the dies that's in the Ornate Garden. This one is my favorite of all of them. I cannot stop uh, making things with this one. And I think it's just something about the intricate scallop border. It's just, I don't know, something about it I love. Okay. Thank you, Linda, it's on white. I'm sorry, you guys. So I will give you guys a minute just to fussy cut out. Or for those of you who want to wait, that's, we'll just give everybody a minute. And I'm going to set this off to the side. Get my glue here. Okay. Scissors. And the dimensionals. Cut 
in these little pieces. Okay. And then one of the other things I'm just going to just talk while I let people fussy cut their flower piece. This piece we're actually going to cut. As you can see, because if we put it on our card, this end does not reach all the way to the end of our card base. And so how you rectify that is you just cut it. But I want to show you this one I cut too close to that T. I actually want to have a little bit more space between the flower and the T. And so just wherever you think is comfortable because most of it's going to get covered up by the flower so you don't need that much. So I'm just going to cut this about right here because that way it gives me plenty of the end piece. It's going to get covered but then I've got more of a gap between my T and the end which is, gives me a little bit more flexibility to tuck behind my flower. And before we do the next step, this flower piece I popped to the card, and you see, with all dimensional. So this whole piece has dimensionals, which really makes it pop. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting dimensionals on. Sometimes I use more than maybe what I need to. Sometimes I use less. Really, however many you want to use. Okay, I'm going to cut one more. And also your take your pick tools, guys, this works really good for taking the dimensionals off of your sheet. I need to get mine out. Something else, you guys, I will be coming around to everybody's house next time for next month's kits and I will be doing the deliveries so I'm really looking forward to that just to see you guys' faces I can't tell you how much I miss seeing all of you won't be able to hug you but just to see you okay so I have taken the backings off of my dimensionals and so now we're ready for a card assembly. So I'm going to grab my mono glue and we're going to start by gluing this piece. Makes a funny sound running across that embossing folder. And again, make sure the fold of your card is where you want it to be. And we're going to go ahead and start gluing that down. Okay, and then before we attach our flower piece, we actually want to go ahead and glue these down as well. So I'm going to start with the piece that says thanks. <laughs> Exposed dimensionals wanted to hang out with me get attached to my hand. So you just want to kind of, I just eyeball kind of in the center of your card and you want to make sure you have about even space on top and bottom. And then just glue that piece down. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. This is what I do just to kind of help me align a little bit better is I just take a piece of scrap when you have two separate pieces like this so that one is not offset from the other one. Here's another crafting tip. Yes, we can have more time to fussy cut. Take your time. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to stop for a minute. So that was a sign, language sign for stop, you guys. Um, I want to just share something kind of sort of funny with you. Uh, Daryl and I went to Costco last week and stocked up on dog food and cat food because that's where I've always gotten their food. And everybody is wearing masks, which that's become our norm these days, right? Everybody's wearing masks. Well, let me tell you, for people who are deaf or hearing impaired, masks are not our friend because we lip read. And <laughs> for me, that's primarily what I do is I lip read. And so it's like, I have no idea what people are saying. Um, I may be able to hear them talking, but it sounds muffled. And so we're in line at Costco getting ready to check out and abiding by the six foot distancing rule. Um, Daryl and I, of course, we abided by that. And there was an employee that was kind of going between all of the check stands and letting people know, okay, you can move up. Well, there was somebody checking out in front of us so we were waiting for them to continue to go on before we moved forward at the time daryl was on the on the phone with the work call and the guy said something to me of course with the mask on i have no idea what he said and so i had to tell him i'm sorry i'm deaf i have no idea what you just said <laughs> um super cool he was kind enough to pull down his mask and repeat what he said but what he was telling us was you guys can, you know, you guys can move up. You can go ahead. And so I had a couple of things in my hand getting ready to put on the conveyor belt. The next thing I know, he's coming through. No, 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 no. You have to wait. And I'm thinking to myself, did I not hear him right? I'm pretty sure he told us to go up, to move up. And he says, no, you have to wait for the cashier to wave you in. Why didn't you tell me that the first time? So anyway super stressful, super frustrated, and then <laughs> Daryl um, usually relays, if somebody says something and I don't understand what they've said, he usually will kind of jump in and, and answer or kind of explain to me. And so we get up to the checkout, he's still on a work call, and the cashier is talking to me with the mask on, no idea what she said. And so I had to say the same thing. I'm sorry, I'm deaf, I have no idea what you're saying. Now here's what cracked me up. She pulled her mask down and she repeated what she said, but she says, oh honey, I get it because my husband is deaf too. And then, this is the funny part, then she puts her mask back on and she's continuing to talk to me. I just laughed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, I, yeah. I am shocked at how frustrating it is for me to go out with everybody wearing masks. I'm like, if, if I just go out and nobody talks to me, then I'm fine. <laughs> but I want people to talk. I want to hear people talking. <laughs> anyway, okay. Did everybody have time to fussy cut their flower piece? Uh, this is not fun, you guys, to hear myself laughing. It's like, I hope you guys are laughing with me. I just wish I could hear it. <laughs> okay, Jim. Bring it in. Alright, so if everybody is done fussy cutting this piece out and has dimensionals on the back, peel off your backing and stick this on. And so as you can see, because you want to leave room, oops, sorry guys, your leaves you don't want to extend out above your card base because then you're not going to be able to get it in the envelope. So just be careful when you're putting your flower piece on that you don't go outside of your card base on top or bottom. And make sure that you're not like Jen who had hers upside down. Make sure your yellow daisies are pointing up. And then when you're ready, you might have to just kind of move it around to figure out your placement and don't cover up your T. And when you've got it right where you want it, go ahead and stick it down. And then we have our card. 
And the inside is just a white liner. And I'm, you can go ahead and glue this down now, or if you want, like a lot of times I like to sometimes stamp a sentiment, and I will do that before I actually glue this piece down, because sometimes I've stamped a sentiment and it was crooked, and so then that allows me the flexibility to try again on the other side and I'm not wasting a piece of paper. If you glue it down and your, st your sentiment is crooked and you want to fix it, if it's glued down you won't be able to do that. So you can either glue this down or if you want to stamp something or write, you want your handwriting to be perfectly lined, it's your choice. I mostly handwrite notes in my cards, and so I'm going to go ahead and just glue this piece down in mine. Thank you, you guys, for your comments about the mask, right? Uh, <laughs> it's, it seems like such a, a small thing, and of course it's important. Everybody's trying to be safe and healthy right now, um, you know, and, uh, but that was the other thing. I had a conversation with somebody. I wear hearing aids in both ears, and I wear glasses. Can you picture me trying to put glasses, hearing aids, and a mask on? I don't even want to know what that would look like for me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness, too funny. Mom, I could not imagine you had the mask flip your hearing aid out. That would be scary, especially for yours. Your hearing aids are small. Ah, life is always interesting. Okay, how are we doing? 45 minutes. And we've got two cards done. Are we doing okay on time? I'm trying not to move too fast. But I do need to take a break and drink, get a drink of water. Oh, for all you know, I might have a glass of wine. Hmm. Just kidding. For those of you who really know me, you know I don't drink wine. So yeah, just a drink of water. Okay. It's a sign you talk too much when, you, when your mouth is really dry and you need a drink of water. Oh, well, who am I kidding? I talk all the time. My husband can vouch for that. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> okay. So the next project we're going to do is this card. I love this card, you guys. I, I cannot stop looking at it. Okay. So this one, you're going to need your glue dots, your dimensionals, and scissors. And then your glue or adhesive, whatever adhesive you're going to use. Okay, so we have all of our pieces here. So real quick, I'm just showing you guys again. This is what our card is going to look like. I'm trying to get that to focus here. And this paper is also part of that ornate garden suite. And this is the other side. I've not made anything with this because when I was doing um, your prep for your kit, like I said, I bought three packs of this and two packs I completely used. Um, each pack has two sheets of this and I used all four sheets because it takes this much for your card and your bags. So, I didn't have any of this left, but I've sent, bought a third pack, and so I'm going to play with this side next. And if you wanted to use this side instead of this side, you absolutely could. I'm just not sure how well your flowers will show up on there. I have a neighbor who makes a mean strawberry wine. Oh, really? That's good to know. 
strawberries are one of my favorites. So maybe if you combine strawberries and wine, I might actually like wine. Hmm, thank you, Donna. <laughs> okay, so this in this kit, you guys have this white strip. And this white strip goes on your card base. I'm going to take this out. And you want to make sure your fold is on the right side. But this is going to cover one end to the other end of your card base. So we're actually going to glue this piece to our card base now. Double check myself here. My fold is on the right place. And again, you just kind of want to try to keep it in the center and have even spaces on both in top and bottom. Nice thing about this Tombow Mono Glue is it gives you a little bit of flexibility to move it into place if you don't have it exactly where you want it. And when you have that white piece where you want it, go ahead and secure that to your base. I'm going to move this out of the way for a minute. So then you have your green DSP. This is Old Olive um, from the Ornate Garden. And so what we're going to do is take this piece and then that beautiful scallop, intricate scallop border piece, you want to get this piece out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut the top and the bottom of our scallop border piece because that is what goes behind our green piece on top and bottom. So we're going to cut those out real quick. And again, make sure all of your holes have been, um, all of your little pieces have been punched out. So you can use scissors or you can use your paper trimmer. But you want to make sure, let me get this piece. So right above your scallops up here, you have holes that go all around the border. You want those intact. Do not cut those little holes before your scallops off. Because we want those holes to show on our card. Go ahead and cut these pieces real quick. And I usually, how I did mine, because you're covering some of yours, is the next scallop, I just cut before that scallop starts. And so that allows me to make sure that I still have all my holes and I have a little bit of extra that gives me a little more flexibility to glue behind my green piece. I'm going to bring this down and go ahead and try to cut straight. And then the other side. And this piece, you can do whatever you want. I usually just use it as a scrap and stamp or color, you know, make a line with the marker if I want to see what color it is. Once you've got these two pieces cut, then I'm going to, I want to show you these scallop pieces do not span the entire um, green piece. So I'm going to show you what I mean here. You can see that white scallop piece is actually shorter than this green piece. It's not meant to go from one end to the other. We actually bring it in a little bit. And so you've got, let me see if I can bring this into closer focus. So I have a little bit of green here on one end as well as the other end. So you want to leave a gap in between each end. This piece does not go from one edge to the other. Hope that makes sense. 
So what I found was actually easier, instead of trying to put the glue on this piece, was it was actually easier to just put a line of glue on the back of the green piece. But remember, don't go from end to end yet, because otherwise when you go to touch it, you're going to get sticky fingers from the glue. So I'm going to go ahead and just glue that, just a line of glue. So as you can see, I've left a gap on each end. Turn this around. And so then I've got, you want to make sure your scallops are facing up. And when you're ready, before I actually secure it down, I make sure that I've got the holes in front of my scallops and a gap on each end. And then when you're ready and you've got that right where you want it, then you can go ahead and secure that. And you've got one, one side done. And here's the other thing you can do as well, is to make sure that when you go to put it on, that you've got enough space. Because you do want enough space so that your scallops are not extending out beyond your card base. So I'm going to attach the other scallop side now to the bottom. Remember your scallops you want facing out. So you just glue those pieces on when you've got it lined up where you want. And isn't that pretty? Isn't it amazing what a little bit of scallop or a border will do? Ooh, that side's even pretty too. Maybe that'd be another project. And then when you're ready, you can glue this piece down to your card base. Let me know if I'm going too fast for you guys and I will slow down. Let me get another bottle of glue out here. You don't want to glue up here where your holes are because when you attach this to your card base, that glue will come out through the holes. I've got sticky fingers. My glue eraser, I love these things. If anybody does not have these, let me know. I will get you one because we all need to have these in our basic tools. They are awesome. Okay, we're going to glue this piece down to our card. You want to make sure you have your white strips showing about the even, even amount on both sides of your card base. And I just eyeball it. If you want to get a little more precise and use a ruler, go for it. That's what I used to do when I was first card making. Now it's just I eyeball it. Okay. Get glue on my table. Okay. The next part we want to do is to take this piece with our sentiment. Just wanted to say you're amazing. You guys are all amazing. I think we are not told that enough. Everybody, you're amazing. So, and this piece is going to get glued directly down to this piece. And I just center it, kind of eyeball it. When you've got it right where you want it, go ahead and secure that down to your card. Okay, and now I'm going to set this off to the side. This is a little bit more involved. 
And I want everybody to get your gold leaf pieces, which look like these. Let me see if I can bring those up to focus. The gold foil leaf pieces, you want to get those out. And these, which are the flowers. And there should be a piece of white card stuck in with these flowers. You need to get all of those pieces out. I'm going to show you guys there's actually a certain way to line up these flowers. So I just separate all my flower pieces. And I'm going to do the same thing for the gold leaf pieces as well. These are very delicate to so be very gentle. Okay. And just so you guys can see better, I'm going to bring in my black craft mat. It'll make these a little bit easier to see. for you or messes with your eyes you guys let me know and we'll go back to the wood table I just dropped a flower where's my little flower okay you guys I dropped my flower hold on <laughs> there we go and then my gold pieces here Okay, I don't know if this helps you guys to see it a little bit better. Let me know. Okay. I might need to bring this closer to the camera. There, that's a little bit better. Can you guys see that okay? Let me know. Okay, so I'm just, and I might need to even go closer. Okay, so this, you know what, before we go into that, in the center of each of these flowers, is supposed to be holes, so mine are not punched out. So if we can take a minute and make sure our holes are punched out before we get started. Okay, this is all paper piercer, I can't believe they retired this. Okay. If you guys get this set and use these dies a lot, you will have these little tiny pieces of paper all over your floor, all over your lap, and all over your desk or your table. Ask me how I know. Okay. And then make sure all of these holes are punched out. Okay, so you guys can see this. Okay, great. Thank you for your feedback. Get that going there. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys. There's, these flowers are not all the same size. See these little dots? They drive me crazy. So that's what I'm doing is I'm taking these off my table. My, my uh, OCD here. I don't like all these little pieces. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to bring this back closer to the screen. Okay, let me move this over. So bear with me because I have to take my head to the side to be able to see the screen so that I can see what you see. So I'm going to start with, there's two flowers that are the same size. These are actually the smaller ones, and so you want to have those separated from all the others. Okay, let me move these down just a little bit. Okay, so then, two, three. Okay, so now these other flowers, I'm trying to show, I'm turning them a certain way because, let me get my bone folder here. So these flowers, 
there's one petal that has one, two, three on the petal where all the others only have two. So if you see one here, one here, and one here. I don't know if everybody can see that or if you can tell by looking at your flowers. And there's a reason why you want to have the petal that has the three, I don't know what you call it, chips? You want to have those all facing the same direction because that is going to come into play when we actually put these together. I hope that makes sense. And for these two, it really doesn't matter how, how we line those up. But for these ones, these are all the same size and everybody should have four. So now I'm going to bring this back down. And I'm going to show you what our first step is. So you're going to take one of these that has, oh, maybe that's a little bit better. Remember your one, two, and three, you want that petal facing you. And so we're going to take that one. I'm going to do the best I can here, you guys. And then you're going to take another flower and that petal that has the three chips on one petal only, you're going to take that and turn it the opposite direction. So I'm going to turn it around so that one, two, three, those chips are now facing up. And so what we're going to do is have on one flower, the three tips are facing up. On the other piece, the three chips are facing toward me. So you're going to have one going up and one going down. And so then what we're going to do is we're actually going to go put a little bit of glue um, on this piece and we're going to take this one and glue right on top of that one. So I'm actually going to do this in my hand. You don't need a lot of glue, just a dab. Now here's the other thing, it's sticking. So, okay. So I'm going to put that back down. I have just a little dab of glue. Remember, three tip petal facing up. Make sure this one's three tip petal facing down. And you're going to take this one and put over the top of that one. Let me lower this down so I can see what I'm doing. And so basically then your flower ends up like that. That way you have, get this in focus here. Um, that way you have a petal showing on both the upper layer and the top layer, or bottom layer, upper and top. Come on, Jen. Okay. <laughs> I promise, the more I do these videos, you guys, I will get better. I promise. I strive to do that. Okay, so if, if I need to go through these steps again, just let me know in the comments. Then, this is where our little strip of Whisper White comes into play. We're actually going to just cut this down. So cut a piece about, I don't know, what'd you say, an eighth of an inch, maybe a little more, not very big. And we're going to cut little squares. So you're going to do two squares. Okay, I heard something. Do you guys hear a humming sound in the background? Or it actually sounds more like a buzzing sound. Hmm, I don't know what that is. Okay. If you guys have tweezers, I know not everybody has them, but I love them, especially for little pieces. It makes it hard for me to pick up sometimes. Or if you have your shaker pick tool, which you know what, I just get that. Um, and I apologize, I did not tell you guys that you needed this. So, I might have to have Daryl come in in a minute, you guys. So 
I'm just going to get my checker pick tool with the putty part and just stick my my piece of white onto that. So then what you're going to do on your flower is you're going to take a little dab of glue right on the top flower Okay, Linda, you said yes. Does that mean you hear this buzzing sound that I'm hearing? So what I'm doing is that dollar of glue I put on the center of that flower, you're going to take this the piece of white square, and I'm going to put that right in the center of my flower. Try to keep it in, as far into the center as you possibly can. You just have that white piece there like that. Okay. I gotta stop. I need to go get Daryl for a minute to come and listen. I will be right back. That's the fan. Oh, it's the fan? Yeah. Okay. One second. Huh? Okay, Candy said it's quiet, but it doesn't interfere with me. Okay. It's, it's a vibration. It's, it's, it's the fan. Huh? It's the it's the fan inside. Okay. Well then, as, as long as I know what it is, and okay. Thank okay. you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. Okay, you guys. Sorry about that. Thank you. <laughs> it's just driving me crazy. I can't hear very well, but little things I do here, especially when I can't figure out where it's coming from. Okay. Anyway. Back to crafting. Crafting, crafting, crafting. Okay, so Daryl said it's the fan from my laptop. I'm sorry. Okay, so now you have your white square in the center of your flower. So now what we're going to do is, and the reason we put that there, is because when you put your little flower over the top, then your center is white. And so it looks, makes it look like the flower has um white centers let me get that up in this camera it's not focusing i hope you guys can see that okay so it just makes it really pop but before you put the little flower piece on top we're going to put a little dimensional piece on the back of the small flower dimensionals i need a bigger table where's my dimensionals here we go okay I'm just, I use this thing for everything. So now I'm just taking a little piece of dimensional and putting it in the center of my flower. You're probably thinking, well, Jen, what's the point of putting the white piece if you're just going to put a dimensional on it, right? I know. But I didn't want you guys to try to be figuring out why is this piece in here and what do we do with it. Oh, and make sure your dimensional is covering. See, mine is not covering up that last hole. And so when I put this on, the white from the cardstock will show through. It will make my flower look like it has white centered. So now I'm going to take this small flower and put it over the top. But you want to offset it so that the petal, so that your flower looks like it's three different dimensions. So now I'm going to put this back down here. 
and you can rotate it until it looks good to you. So you just want to try to make it to where your flower looks like it's three-dimensional. Let me see if I can get that in and see if you guys can notice you have three different layers there of your flower. Isn't that pretty? Then the next part, I'm going to try to really do this as best as I can. My fat fingers are getting in the way. The bottom layer of the flower, I'm actually going to take the petal and kind of bend it downward a little bit. And I just do that on every petal on the bottom flower only. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. It sounds weird, but you'll see in a minute what that really just elevates your flower. And then the top flower, the petals I'm going to bring upward a little bit. And this is where it gets kind of tricky to hold on to the flower. But I'm just kind of gently bending the outer petals facing up. And so that really just makes your flower pop. And then we're going to set that off to the side. And we're going to do the same thing with the other flower. Just make sure that your one, two, three, three tips facing down on one flower and three tips facing up on the other flower. Now on this one, the a piece of dimensional actually goes on the bottom flower. So I'm going to cut a little piece here. So it's just a little dimensional goes on the bottom flower, right in the center. And then we're going to peel that backing off of there. Remember, make sure your three chips facing down and on the other flower, three chips facing up. Then when you're ready, go ahead and remember your, flower, your petals are going to be offset a little bit, which is what we want. And so now your flower should look like this. And then your other square that you cut, we're going to glue that to the top of that second flower. Okay, so I'm going to glue this piece. Actually, I need to cut it a little bit because it's too big. And that's going to be right in the center. And then you're going to take this smaller flower that's left and place that over the top of this one. And remember, offset your petals a little bit. And I do the same thing. I take the bottom flower and bend the petals downward just a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. And then I take the top flower petals and bend upward a little bit. Okay, so just real quick, these flowers are made with terracotta tile, sponge on the outer edges of the petals with terracotta tile and a sponge dropper. Okay, so then we have our flowers. So now we can set those off to the side. And then we're going to focus on our leaves here. So let me see, get this in the screen. So on your gold leaves you have one big, long, tall piece. Everybody should have one of these. Now these ones, okay, hang on, let me move these around here. Ah, sticking to me. 
Oh, come on. Okay, so then, let's see if you guys can see. Let me get my paper piercer. Everybody should have two that has one, two, three buds on there. Can everybody see that? You should have two with three buds. And then you have two with two buds, one here and one here. One here and one here. So you actually want to keep those separate. The three buds from the two buds. That is going to come into play when we actually put this card together. Or you can put them in whatever way you want. So I'm going to show you how I did it on my card. Okay, bear with me because I'm trying to hold this closer to the camera and I'm bringing the card in so you guys can see a little bit better. I'm going to cock my head to the side so I can see what you see. Okay, let me, let me bring these down a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this the best I can. Um, and I can go over this step more than once if we need to. So I'm gonna, your bottom flower, your biggest gold leaf, and I'm going to take this and place it over the top so that you guys can actually... That's not going to work. Hold on. <laughs> okay, if you guys can just visualize... And bring this back up. This longest, tallest one actually is going to go in this corner. And as you can see, the bottom piece of this is we're going to cut off because the flower is going to hide it. But we're not going to do that part yet. So basically, your biggest piece goes here in that corner facing upward. Okay? And then... Um, Hold on. We're just going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this section down. So I'm going to cut, make a cut right here. But don't cut that bud. You want to keep that bud on there. This might make things a little easier, which, which is why we're cutting this now. And so, that biggest part that we just cut off that's going to go in this corner facing upward. The piece that we just cut off that has one bud on this edge, that piece. Let me bring this over here. Actually, sorry, I forgot. So we have a branch that goes out and one that goes up, you need to cut those branches away. So we're going to cut those off because we don't need those. So then what you're left with is just one branch and one bud. That piece is going to go here. So I'm trying to show so that's our first piece that goes up, and this piece that we just cut actually goes, this bud that goes facing this way. This will just bear with me. Don't try to put these together yet because we're not at that step. I'm just showing you the process of where we align these pieces. And now we're going to take, let me see, double check here. Okay, the piece that has three buds. No, sorry, two buds. We need the piece that has three buds. So you have a bud here, a bud here, and a bud here. So you need this piece next. And that piece is going to go facing down. So that piece goes right here. Okay. And then we have one more bud. So that piece goes there. Okay. Before we, so there's one more. Um, 
piece if I can get my fingers to cooperate here. <laughs> so on your other three bud piece, you're going to cut that. So basically the piece that we need is just these two buds here. So we're going to cut this part away. So then what you're left with is two buds. That piece, let me bring this up so you guys can see, it goes on this piece right here. So basically, it's going to look like that. And that is for one flower. This one is a lot easier. So I'm going to take these pieces away because when we actually go to put these together, I will go through it with you step by step when we go to adhere it to the card. Okay, so then what you're left with is two pieces that have two buds each. These are the pieces that we're going to use for the top flower. And so basically one goes this way pointing out and the other one goes the other way, facing down. Okay? Anybody have any questions about that one? Now I'm going to show you this is where our glue dots come into play. This is where we need our glue dots because these are so delicate. And I've not had much success with gluing these with mono glue without getting glue everywhere. It's just so much easier to use glue dot. So, um, mine is on a roll, and so if you have them on a roll, I found it's just easier to take your take your pick tool or your paper piercer and lift them up. But before we do that, sorry, we need dimensionals to put on the backs of our flowers. Actually, hold on, stop. Wait. <laughs> okay. No, sorry, I was wrong. No dimensionals. So we can actually glue our flowers. Make sure you have the right side facing up. And we're going to glue the back side of our flowers. And we're going to attach them to our card. And how you place them on there is entirely up to you. Whatever looks good. Okay. And we're going to do that for both flowers. Okay. My last comment didn't go through. So way back in the beginning of our chat, I had responded to a question about spring life on the farm. And for some reason I see it's on my screen, it did not go through, but my comment was spring life on the farm right now is slow. The seeds have been planted. Raised beds are almost in the process of being built. Um, we have a lot of voles here, which they will decimate your garden. They come up from under the ground and just pull the roots and everything right down into the ground. So we're going to try raised beds and see how that works for us. Uh, plan on hold for the chicken coop because the chicken coop this time will have a concrete floor. Um, we have a lot of predators here and I do not want predators digging up through the bottom of my coop getting my chicks. Um, but um, we are not essential, so gravel has been put on hold, and we're just waiting till we can get that, till we can get the chicken coop floor put in, till we can build the coop. Chicks will be here in two weeks, you guys. I'm so excited. If you thought I'm having another batch of chicks again, because then I get to play with them and hold them, and of course, the best part is name them all. That is my favorite part. Sometimes I have to change the names if I get some that 
have an interesting personality and the name doesn't quite fit. Yes, I am that crazy chick. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So now once you have your flowers on your card where you want them, now we're ready to, for the glue dot and the gold leaf part. So we're going to start with the top flower with the pieces that have the two buds on them. And so what you're going to do is, I'm going to turn this over so maybe you guys can see that better. I have a glue dot on this paper piercer and I'm actually just going to tuck it on, stick that on. I have to roll it. These are really super sticky and so once you have your glue dot on, then you're going to tuck it in behind your flower. So I just lift that up a little bit. And then once you've got your placement where you want it, and you can go in a little further if you want, just be very careful, these are delicate. And once you've got it where you want it, go ahead and secure that one in place. And then you do the same thing with the other one facing downward. Get my glue dot here. Stick that on. Oh, come on, man. So I have to tell you guys something too. After the last video, I went back and I watched the whole thing. I watched the whole replay. Oh! Oh, get this, get this, this is the best part. Okay, I apologize if my voice is shrieking because when I get super excited, that's what happens. I'm sorry, turn your ears down. Um, but I have to tell you, when I went back and watched the replay, and Daryl and I went back and checked it out, there's captioning on the video now. I'm like, what? That's so cool. This video does not have the captioning, and we think it's because it's live, so we think that they go in later and add the captioning. Super excited. Okay, then I'm just going to tuck that in on my other flower and have it facing downward. So now we have our top flower all pretty with the gold. So we're going to do the bottom. Okay, Candy, I did one glue dot for each gold piece. You just need one. If you have big blue dots, you can you can try cutting them or um, kind of roll them up into a, a smaller ball so they're not so big. You can try that too. So now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So we have our biggest piece, which remember we cut some off. And so you're going to take this piece and put it on first. So I'm going to get a glue dot and put it on there. So I just do one. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tuck it in. Actually, I grabbed the wrong one because this is facing, see how this leaf is going that direction? That's not the one we want because we want more of an upward. So we want the one that has two buds kind of side by side because those are going more of an upward. Yes, mom, bling blue dots work perfectly. I'm actually out of those. I need to order some more. Those work pretty good too. Okay, that like never happened. Did you guys see that? That blue dot popped right off of here on my card. Huh? What? Okay, I'm going to glue that one on there. I apologize if you guys hear licking. Blue is laying over there on the floor grooming her paws. So if you hear lick, 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 it's blue. Yes, we're talking about you. Okay, so now I'm going to just tuck this in behind my flower. 
and you want it going more of an upward and then glue that down okay then the other piece that I just put a glue dot on that has three buds on it we're going to take that piece and put in the bottom corner kind of coming outward like this like that one going up and one kind of coming downward a little bit okay we're almost done with this one oh how many cheek names <laughs> um, I have 30 cheeks coming uh, a couple of them will already have names that my last batch had. Um, one was Gloria, and that was one of my Buff Orpingtons, and we just, oh, that name just fit her perfectly. Definitely a good name for a Buff Orpington chick. Um, I will get Rhode Island Red this time, um, and I'm getting 15 of those. This will be my first time I've had 15 Rhode Island Reds. Um, so 15 Rhode Island Reds, 10 Bard Rocks, and 5 Buff Orpingtons is what I'm getting. So it's going to be fun. I'm super excited and I hate that I have to wait until late fall, early winter before I can get fresh eggs because oh my gosh, fresh eggs are the best. And I really miss having my fresh eggs, but I really miss, even more than that, listening to my chicks. They're little peeps, and then when they get older, they're a little clucking, and I just miss all of those things. But it feels good. We will have more of a permanent um, structure for the chickens, and getting the garden in. I'm super excited. We're hoping to have a greenhouse put up, but I think that's probably going to happen next year. So just a heads up, you guys might be getting some fresh eggs and produce if I cannot keep up with it. It's just too much because I want to do everything and that sounds kind of crazy actually, but I'm going to try. Okay, so now we're going to go so this is our top piece that faces upward. So now we're going to do this piece that kind of comes out this way. And that is with the two bud pieces. And on the Rhode Island Red Chickens, I had one before and we named her Mama. She was Mama Red, but we only had one. So, <laughs> so remember this piece. It's going to go in this section right here. So now we're just going to tuck that in. I've got to do it with this flat on the table. And you can lift up your flower a little bit if you need to. Just to kind of tuck it in. Okay. Okay, and then you guys should have a piece left that has one bud with a tiny branch. Cut away that little branch. We don't want that on there. Oops. Just don't cut your bud off. Okay, so now we're just left with a tiny little bud and we're going to glue that piece. It's going to kind of come out through here. So let me show you on the sample. And so if this is the bud that comes out. It's just that one lone bud coming this direction. And put a glue dot on the back of that. And I apologize, you guys. I uh, was hoping for an hour and a half video and... 
we are beyond that. So I do want to let you know if anybody has uh, other things or plants that they need to tend to, this video will be available for a replay. And maybe by then they'll have captioning. You guys are able to go back and watch the replay and put together your projects if you need to. Okay, get this piece off of me. I have to know, when you guys craft, do you guys talk to yourself? Because I feel like sometimes I'm the only one that does that. And other people might think you're just crazy, right? Okay, so now we have that lone bed coming down this way. Almost done! <laughs> okay, I think that's it. And you guys should have one piece left, which is just one measly little bed. We don't need that piece, so you guys can throw it away or do whatever you want. Yay, I'm not the only one that talks to herself. <laughs> okay, and then, these are my notes for this card. Oh, by the way, this base color is Calypso Coral. So let me go back over here with our terracotta tile. I mean, these colors are so close together, but terracotta tile is just a tad bit darker. Isn't that pretty, you guys? I love that. And that pop of gold with the sentiment embossed in gold is just really pretty. Okay, so now get this open. Hopefully you guys have your folds going the right way. And then we're going to take our piece for the inside that says Happy Mother's Day embossed in gold. And this also is another die from that Ornate Garden Suite. And then I'm just going to glue this onto the inside of my card. If you don't want the Happy Mother's Day and you want to do something different, you can turn this over, glue this side, and just adhere that down if you wanted to do something different. This originally was going to be my Mother's Day card for Mom Hearn, Daryl's mom, until I realized, oh, wait a minute, she's going to have this kit. I can't send her the same card that she's going to put together. <laughs> and just glue that down to the inside, and voila, that one is done. So now you guys are set for a Mother's Day card, or just a card to send to somebody to let them know they are amazing. Okay, that's that one. I love this one. This is my favorite. So pretty. Ooh, that buzzing. The things I want to hear, I can't hear. And the things I don't want to hear, I hear. What's up with that? I'm sorry, you guys. You have to, you're, you're stuck with me. Me and my craziness. Okay, so now I'm gonna take just a small break and grab a drink, and then we're gonna get started on a little gift bag. So cute! And at the end of the video, I will post the dimensions for you guys to make your own. These are super sturdy, guys. Wait till you put it together, you will be shocked at how strong this little bag is. So, in your kit, let me get my pieces over here. Jimmy, I wonder, are you still on? Are you able to party with us? I haven't seen Jimmy on for a while. I know she's having some buffering issues. Okay. Okay, let me read comments real quick here. My last comment didn't go through, so I'm not really sure what's going on here. Let me see if that one, that one's not going through either. 
Okay, so my comments are not going through when I respond, so I'm just going to have to verbalize. Um, the microphone is in the laptop, but I think the camera above me also has a microphone as well. Are you hearing me loud and clear? Do I sound okay? This was another bag. I thought I was going to have to do this because I didn't think I had enough paper to do another one of these with you guys. So, oh thanks mom, rub it in. Mom is having this beautiful weather back east, 79 degrees. And here we have like 51 up here at my house. Clouds and a chance of thunderstorm. Don't rub it in mom, because I'll bring you out here with me and I'll make you bring it with you. I want sunshine. Okay, so we're going to set this to the side because I have a secret to show you on this one. Okay, so my notes here. And again, I will have dimensions for this for you guys so you guys can make your own. Okay, so I thought I did not have enough paper. Um, and I actually do not have enough of this paper because these pieces are enough for the front and the back. I did not have enough to do the sides, which is why I was going to do this one. So this bag, everything will be the same, except I will not demonstrate your side pieces, but you guys can just glue those on. Um, but I have to tell you, so I had this piece, which was the exact right size for the front of the bag. And then I had, I don't know if you guys can see this pencil mark here, and then there's a seam right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. See that seam? So what this was, was this was one piece of scrap that was not long enough. But with this, so what I did was I had this little skinny piece of a scrap, and I glued this onto the back of Wisp of White cardstock with this piece, and then I measured. So this pencil line right here is where I need to cut so that this piece will be the same size. So the reason I'm telling you this is if you have scrap and you don't have enough to make a whole sheet, if you just have enough to do this, you could absolutely do that. So instead of buying a whole nother pack of paper. Are you listening to that, honey? I'm being very frugal with my paper. Okay. I need to grab my trimmer real quick. See if I can find it. Here it is. I was going to cut it ahead of time until I realized, wait, this would be a good tip to share with the ladies. So I'm just going to cut along that pencil line. And, blah, blah. and I still have a piece of scrap. I don't know if I'm going to do something with it. Don, what do you think? I used to be the paper scrap queen. And by the way, thank you. We have Don's mom joining us as well. So her name is Karen. So hi, Karen. Thank you for crafting with us. And mom Herman is joining us as well. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> okay. So in your kit, everybody should have two of these pieces and two long rectangular skinny pieces. And then you're also going to have where, oh, here's my other ones. Let me get out my pieces I need here. Oh yeah, we have another card, but to, uh, another flower, but you guys know how to do that now, but we'll, we'll go through the steps on that one. And then you guys have this for you, heat embossing gold. This die cut is from the Sweetly Stitched Bundle. I will tell you, this sentiment is retired. Um, I could not find the perfect one for this size, that I really wanted a similar font with this one. I love the curly, you know, swirly look, which this one also has. So I was trying to find something that was close. But this sentiment is retired, and I don't remember, I think it was happiest of birthdays or something. And then everybody should have these two pieces. Um, 
These are our Thick Whisper White, so these are a little thicker, which also helps to add to the stability of our gift bag. These little pieces. Okay, so when, at the time I made this sample, I used this skinny uh, gold ribbon, and I realized that when I was doing prep for the kits for you guys, this ribbon is retired. So then I ordered, this is a current Stampin' Up! ribbon, which is like a very vanilla with the gold, which is really pretty. So everybody has these. Love this ribbon. This is like the perfect, you know, the perfect size for this little bag. But it's retired. And you know, we try to do current things. So we can set our ribbons to the side. We don't need those right now. So basically everybody should have in front of you your two bag pieces, and I need to know from everybody if your pieces have been cut, because I don't remember if I did that or if we're going to do that together. So when you get a minute, if you guys could type it in the chat and let me know. If not, I'll go through all the steps with you. I'm going to set these pieces to the side, because we don't need those right now. And we need our glue. And... After this bag, when we're done, I will post the dimensions for you guys so you can make them yourself. And we have another Crafty Chick giveaways. We have a couple of Crafty Chick giveaways. Um, and so we'll, we'll go into that as well as I have a couple things to tell you about next video, next crafting kit. Okay. What do we... So, did I cut these pieces for you guys? Or are they, like, complete squares? I don't remember. I'm getting old. I think. Forever young, that's one thing. But I am getting old, because I do these kits in advance, and so it's hard for me to remember Linda says no. Okay, thank you. So, so we're going to set this aside and I'm going to go through this with you guys. So you should have, this is what we're going to do. Oh no, mine have already been cut. I was saying we can do these, but these have already been cut too. So basically, you guys have two pieces that look like this that are square shaped, right? So, there's something I want to explain to you guys on these. You're gonna, there's two sides, right? Well, from where I scored, your one side is going to have the raised edge facing up. So when you run your finger along it, along it, you can feel that it's raised up. If you turn it over and you look at the score line and you run your finger over, it's not as prominent. It's not as much of a raised design. I hope that makes sense. So the reason I'm telling you that is because you want your raised edges facing up. So basically facing you on both of these. Does that make sense from where your score lines are? So raised edges facing up. Okay, thank you, Candy. <laughs> and so the reason that is important is because when we go to actually assemble this, when we go to put these bags together, one square, as you can see, has one tab where this one does not. And that comes into play, as well as what size we fold our flaps down on. That comes into play. So that is why that is important to know raised edges facing up or down. So raised edges facing up to you, and the first thing that we're going to do is, first I have to ask, you guys should have four holes on each piece. And then, your DSP should also have, I think, two holes on each piece. So you should have the holes that line up. If I did not do that part, you could just take your paper piercer or a needle and just poke holes through it after you glue this piece down. But before we do that, okay, so I'm going to try my very best to explain this part to you guys. You guys have square. So on one, I'm going to go ahead and take this sticky note off. 
So we're going to start with one. And so basically you want to make sure that you have a long rectangular flap that faces up. And so you're going to have a score line down and a score line down. And so basically if, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put this on here. So this is, just ignore this. This is basically what you guys have. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut up this score line and up this score line. And what you're going to do is you're going to completely get rid of that square. So you have a score line going here and score line going down. So get rid of these two corners. Oh, Donna, your DSP doesn't have holes. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Um, so on one piece, just cut those away, and that's all you need to do on that piece. So then you're left with a tab in the middle. So I'll give you guys a minute to just do those really quick. I did this project like I don't know how many weeks ago and so sometimes I have to just to refresh my memory go through some of the steps. Alright so once everybody has these bottom corners cut away and if you don't want to cut them right now you can just do what I do is I just take a pen and scribble, scribble line and that kind of tells me I need to cut those away. So we're going to set this one to the side. And then we're going to do this piece here. So you guys um, have your squares. And so score lines are the exact same as they are on this piece. And so then what we're going to do, instead of cutting along this score line, you're going to leave that intact. So basically this whole line stays intact. So now I'm going to take the side with the four holes and turn it to my right. So basically you're left with this bottom row. So the score line you're going to cut is this score line from this edge just up to that score line. So basically you're going to have a tab. Do not cut all the way across. So you're going to have a tab here and you're going to do the same thing and cut from this edge up to that score line. So you're going to have two tabs on this piece. So you have one piece that has the middle tab and this piece that has the right and left tabs that fold in is what you're looking at. Okay? Okay, somebody said paper piercer, yes. Please show finished project product again. Okay, so this little, let's see here. This little gift bag is what we're making. I'm going to turn it to the side. And this is the back side. So this is what we're making. Okay, finished product. I don't know if you were talking about the gift bag or these pieces. So I'll just really quick go through this again. So on this piece where you have your score line coming all the way down, you want to just cut away the bottom left and right corner square on that piece. And then on this piece where you have the score lines coming down, Remember, your holes are up at the top, and you want to just cut. So I'm going to turn this over to where the four holes are on my right side. So you're going to cut from this edge up to that score line, basically giving you a tab. So you're just going to have a tab, or a flap, whatever you want to call it. And you're going to do the same thing on this end, cutting from the edge of that up 
two of that score line, which gives you another tab. Okay? How are we guys? Are we okay on this one? It takes a minute between the time that I say something and that I get a response from you. There is a little bit of a delay. So if you think I'm not being prompt in answering your questions, I assure you it's not from my lack of. It's just there is a little bit of a delay, a little bit of lag time. Okay, so if we are done with this part, then I'll go ahead and move on to the next step which will be to glue our DSP pieces down. Remember, your raised edges face up towards you. So I'm going to grab our mono glue. This one's going to be a little thicker because I glued it to Whisper White. I'm not sure if Jimmy is still on. I haven't seen her on here in a while. So we're just going to glue this down. Do not worry about the holes. I'm sorry. I meant to punch the holes in with the DFP. So I'm going to have to um, let me line this up. Just You want to stay within inside of those score lines. So try to keep your DSP inside as much as you can. So we're going to do that on both sides. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop, stop. Hold on. I messed up. I have to try to peel this away before the glue sets. I made a mistake. <laughs> um, I'm getting all messed up here. Hold on. Okay, no, no, sorry, we were right, we were right. It's just there's a certain way you're flat, and so I wanted to make sure we were on the right side of the bag. I'm sorry, you guys, don't mind me. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I do need a glass of wine. Anybody have any suggestions? Or maybe chocolate, maybe that's what I need, some chocolate. I'm going to glue this back on here again. I hope you guys are smiling or laughing at my, my craziness. It's okay. Okay, so I'm going to glue this piece on to this one. Remember, stay within the inside of those score lines. Okay, so now for you guys, remember, I did not have any more of this paper. So you also have two smaller rectangular pieces you guys will need to... So let me explain this really quick here. So basically, once you have your DSP on, this top flat comes toward you and so basically then this becomes the front or the back side of your bag so just to kind of give you a, a little bit of a visual okay you're going to glue your two small rectangular pieces onto the side so we're just going to pretend that this is the green and so you're going to glue those pieces on to the side of your piece that has a flap So I'll give you guys a minute to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do that with this one because it doesn't match. And I like things matchy-matchy. So I'm just going to make this bag without the sides. It's okay. As long as the pretty is on the front and the back, I'm good. I 
I'm just, while I'm waiting for you guys, I'm just kind of reminding myself of the steps here. <laughs> so I can make sure I tell you guys the right thing. Okay. And this goes in like this. So if you just watch what I'm doing, you know that I'm just going through the motions here. Okay. So if everybody has their DSP on one side, then the next step we need to do is you have your, remember that beautiful scallop border? You guys should have two pieces of that. So I want to tell you the width of this is the same as the width of this, except for one scallop at the end. So let me just show you what I mean. So I'm going from one edge where I have one group. So basically when I say one scallop, it's one, two, three. That is an overhang. And we're going to actually cut just that one away. Get my scissors here. Get everything wanting to hang out. So basically what I am doing is get this in the camera here. So you see how you have a scallop. And so when I say there's three loops here, one, two, three. I'm going to completely come in between these two scallops where those two holes are and cut right, right in between those. Because if you go to line this up, that's basically where you, where you cut is in between. So you're going to have your two holes at the end. Let me, let me get this under here. Come on, Jen. So, see how I have two holes at the end, and that, those are in between the scallops. Okay, so now it's on my keyboard, I have to pull that away. Okay. Hold on, I had a message come through on my phone. So, going back to... So here is the finished card that we made. The Mother's Day card. So let me, I'm not sure if you want to see the flowers or the leaves. Let me get that in the camera a little bit better. Let me know if that helps, if that doesn't help and I will show it again. Okay. I have my phone right here in case anybody wants to message me or if I'm not quick to respond to the chat. Remember, I'm not ignoring you, I promise. Okay. So once you have that piece cut, then we're ready to glue this. But you do not want to butt this up to that score line because remember this flop comes down and we don't want to cover up our pretty scallops. So what I do is I actually just bring this down, kind of eyeball where you think it might be and bring the flap. And you can have a little white showing or if you want more of like a line of white, you can bring it down as far as you want. I don't like to have that much white showing. I go just up to the dots. Okay, I'm reading comments here. Small rectangles both glue on the side with cut out squares. Okay, Candy, can you please reiterate your question about the small rectangles on the sides with cut out square? So this piece, uh, rectangles. Okay, um, reiterate your question and I will see if I can better answer what you were asking about the small rectangles. drives me crazy. You know what I just realized? You guys see this? This is where my, my Columbia fleece jacket just kind of puffs out. 
This is not, you know, anything else. It's not boobs or belly. It's just kind of where it's puffed out. <laughs> okay. So now once you've got this figured out where you want, then you just glue this. What I actually recommend is putting a line of glue at the top of your flap so that when you actually bring it towards you, your scallop border will be secure. And then we can bring this back and then glue here to attach this to that. I hope that makes sense. I'll show you. So we're going to do just a line of glue up here across the top. Try to keep it as close to the edge as possible, but don't have big globs, otherwise it'll squish out the top. And so I just put a line of glue across the top, and I'm just going to eyeball exactly where I want my scallop. And once you've got that where you want it, go ahead and secure that. And so then you have your scallop. Actually, we're not going to glue this to that. Ignore that last one. Okay, so basically your scallop should be attached to your top flap. And so you're able to fold that towards you. And so this is the front of your bag. So this is thick wisp of white. If you guys do this and make these bags and use a scallop border, you want to use thick whisper white because when you go to fold your flap, you want it to be sturdy enough to be able to withstand being folded like that. Okay, so that's the front of your bag. So we're actually going to set this off to the side and we're going to do the next piece. But before we do that, I'm going to punch out my holes through my DSP because that's where we're going to feed ribbon through. Okay, let me answer Candy's question. And mom has a question. Oh, this drives me crazy. Um, did you glue it to the underside of the flap? Yes, you can glue that to the underside of your, your flap. And Candy, do small green rectangles. Okay, I understand your question, thank you. So yes, you take your two small rectangles and glue to this piece of your bag. So basically, you'll have your side, your fine to your other side. Because this part, the side flaps are actually going to get tucked behind these flaps. So you want your DSP on this piece that, we're, that we just are working on. Thank you, I'm sorry I didn't understand your question. Okay, so real quick while I'm giving you guys time, just give me a couple seconds. Let me punch my hole. I love this hole punch. This is Stampin' Up! Retired. I think it's an eighth of an inch hole punch. And I use this a lot for things like this or to make holes for tags. So if you guys want to do this or if you have these hole punches, so what I'm going to do is just take the flap, fold it over where my holes already are. I'm just going to line that up and punch through those. I apologize, you guys, that I didn't punch the holes with uh, your DSP. Note to self. Oh, that's kind of hard. Okay. Okay, so this piece, we're going to move to the side and start this piece now. I'm taking a break to grab a drink of water. Hopefully you didn't hear me bulk too loudly. Okay. So then remember we have another scallop border and we're going to do the same thing. You have the end piece. In between the two scallops you have two holes. We're going to cut on this side of the two holes. Okay, I'm 
just making sure that this edge lined up with that edge. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just do a, a, a line of glue up here at the top. I'm just going to kind of eyeball about where I want it. You know, I was way off. And it does not have to be exactly lined up with this one. But nobody got time for that. Come on. We'll just get it as close as we can. Okay. And again, because I didn't do the holes, I have to punch those out. This is where the fun begins. So now you have your two pieces. So we're going to start with the piece that has the middle flap and the corner square to cut away. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go really slow, but I'm just going to show you guys how to combine these two pieces together. And then I will go through each step so we can actually put them together. So basically, so you have this piece. So you're going to bring this side tab in and this side tab in. So this is actually the front of your bag. Okay, your bottom flap. So I'm going to turn this around. So this should be on the bottom. So we're actually going to bring it up toward you. And now I'm going to actually lay this flat. So from the top view, this is what your bag should look like. Okay, now I'm just showing you how to assemble these is what we're doing. Then we're going to take this piece. I'm going to really try to do this. Okay, so we're just going to pretend this is standing up. So then this is the back side of our bag. So now we're going to take this, these two tabs here, we're actually going to put adhesive on. So you can use a high tack adhesive or your mono glue. And these side tabs are going to get glued to this side tab. So basically you're gluing here and that gets attached to this side of your bag. And then you're going to do the same thing on this side. You're going to take this tab, put glue on it or adhesive, and you're going to attach that to this side. Okay, so basically that's going to be the back side of your bag. So now this is where this flap comes into play. You're going to lift this flap up, glue this side, this flap gets attached to the bottom part of this side of the bag. So basically it's going to look like this. So you're going to glue that together. So, okay? And then you're going to glue this side and this side, which is going to attach to the side of your bag. So then this comes up, we're going to pretend these have glue. This comes up, you're going to bring these in, and then those get glued to the side of your bag, like that. Okay? So yeah, you're going to have your corners stick out a little bit, but that's okay. So basically, remember, you guys will have your DSP on the side. And that is your bag. Okay? So now we're actually going to go through and put that together. So I'm going to really try to go slow and take it step by step. So we want the piece that has the middle flap. Remember, this is the piece you should have your DSP on the side. So we're going to put this one over here. So I actually would recommend turning it with your scallop border on the right side. And so you're just going to turn that over. So we have our front of our bag, we're going to take these and fold them in a little bit and we're going to turn this around until you should have your bottom flap, 
okay? So I'm actually going to lay this flat. So remember, front of our bag, flat. And I'm going to take this flap and bring it in. And we're going to glue this piece. We can, we can glue this directly to this piece now. So we're going to do that. Just your bottom flap, and I'm going to butt it up with this piece, and then that's going to get this flap is going to go and get adhered to this piece. And try to keep it within the inside of your score line. And so now these two pieces should be together. Okay, and then, hold on, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, this piece goes next. Hold on. Okay, so these actually go. Okay, so from the inside of your bag, I don't really care, but some people are kind of funny where they don't want the tabs showing. And so there's a way to cover them. Basically what you would do is attach them to this side. And so then you have your flaps on the inside. Some people don't like those showing. So what you could do is your back side of your bag you could glue if you wanted to. I, you know, I don't really care either way. I, who's really going to look in there and go, you didn't cover your flaps. But if you want to, you can Okay, so now, let me just make sure that those are really secure. So now what we're going to do is these side flaps are going to get glue and attach to the side of our back of our bag. And so basically this comes up. This has glue and gets attached. This has glue and gets attached. Okay, they will be, I mean, and they're not going to show from the inside. This is just probably easier to do it this way because this part, our front of our bag, where you guys have your DSP pieces on the side, covers these tabs up so you don't see them at all. So it's a nice flush. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so remember, front of our bag and the back of our bag. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue on these side tabs. And then the back side on the right side actually come in. So I just bring this up and line it up with those side tabs and hold it in place for a few seconds and do the same thing on the other side for a few seconds to really get that glue to adhere. Let me bring this in. However, it's easier for you to glue. And you can even turn it over and really you can take your bone folder and just kind of line it up along the edge and make sure it's really secure. And do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so this is what your bag should look like now. So you kind of got your box forming here, which is the front. So now what we're going to do is glue this side tab and this side. I said tab, I mean flap. So. The side flaps, we're going to put glue on. Actually, hold on, hold on, because your DSP should be here. It's actually this side, I'm sorry. You're going to glue this side. Because that's going to come in and go on the inside of your gift bag. I don't have to do the top part, I just do the bottom. And then it 
becomes really easy. You just bring that up and in and attach it. And you're going to have to hold it in place for a minute. Sometimes it helps to kind of just put a couple fingers or your bone folder. And so what I'm doing is I'm really getting those two layers to really attach. And then we do the same thing on this one. So I'm actually going to turn this over. So you guys should have your DSP facing on the outside. get those attached. It's just going to take a little bit longer because they're thicker layers. And if you can feel, if you push down on the side of your bag, feel how sturdy that is. That is super strong. Okay. So now, I don't know about you, but I have a little bit of this flap sticking out, so I'm going to put glue behind that. And then I have a message come through, so Give me just a second. So it's just this corner here. Okay. There we go. Hold that there for just a minute. Okay, and then I think, oh, I did the same thing here. I hope you guys didn't have that problem. Okay, glue that side. We're almost done with this one. I love when a project comes together. This is such a strong little bag. Okay. And in your kit, you guys had a handmade card that I made for you. And it was just a small way of saying I'm very grateful for you. Um, Mom, yours is in the mail because it never made it into your kit. Anyway, um, you guys can keep it, put it in a frame, hang it up on your wall, or spread the kindness, send it, send it on to someone else, whatever you guys want to do. Okay, so now... So we're going to pretend my DSP is on here. This is really strong, you guys. Ha <laughs> ha Okay, so the next step, you can either leave it, um, what am I trying to say, flat and open like this, or if you want it like a true gift bag style where it's kind of more scrunched in on the side, how we do that is you need brute force strength. No, I'm kidding. You really don't. What I do is I take my two index fingers kind of on the side here, and I take my thumb on the front of the bag. Using these, you kind of push in a little bit. And at the same time, using my other finger, my middle finger, and my thumb, and kind of pushing in a little bit. And if this flap comes out, just push it back in. But you just kind of pull those in together. You're going to notice the front of your bag buckles a little bit. Don't worry about that. So, this is really strong. But once you kind of get it this way, then it kind of holds its shape. And so now you've got your little gift bag. How fun is that, huh? Let's see where it has, kind of just where it falls into place, you can see on the sides here. Visual gift bag. Okay, so now here comes the best part. It's the decorating part. So I'm, I'm going to make this side my front. This is prettier than that side. And where this is kind of buckled, 
we can just go in and just pop that back out. Not a big deal. Okay, so now we're going to start with the ribbon. So you guys should have two strands of ribbon. As you notice, the ends are angle cut. And the reason for that is because when you're trying to thread, I'm way out of the camera. What I take, you take that sharp corner and that actually makes it easier to feed through the hole and for you to be able to grab it from the inside to pull through. So that is why when you're doing things like this, you want to do the angle cuts. Okay, and if you need to puff out the side of your bag to give you a little leverage, go for it. So now we're just going to pull that through. And so now what I'm going to do is, everybody has a way that they tie knots. How I do mine is I just wrap this around my finger, make a loop, and I pull this through. Nothing fancy, just your basic simple knot. And I try to pull it so that it's close to the end of the ribbon as possible. And then this is frayed. And so now I'm just going to come in and cut this off. And you pull that back through. And so now you have one side of your handle ready. Now here's the other thing you have to remember when you pull this side through. How long or how short do you want your handle? Because and another way to gauge is you can bring it toward the bag if you want it about the length of the bag or if you want it a little shorter. That's a good way to kind of eyeball and gauge. So now I'm going to take the other corner and feed it through. Make my knot. And then just pull that through. And the frayed part, that's not so pretty, so I just cut that off. And there's one handle for your bag. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Sticky fingers. Sticky, sticky. Glue eraser. <laughs> oh, this reminds me I need to buff my nails. Oh, just another thing on my to-do list. <laughs> Okay, so taking that corner, feeding it through. Oh, come on, Jen. Voila, I got it. Okay, we're almost ready for the crafty chick giveaways. I've already got next month's giveaways picked out. I just have to order them, but I've got them picked out. That's the best part of this whole thing, spoiling you guys, because you guys are so fun. I love that part. Up. Who doesn't like free stuff? So what I'm doing here is just to kind of keep both of my handles about the same length. I'm just grabbing the one that I've already got knotted in place and just kind of bringing my other one in just so I can make sure they're fairly even. Oh, I gotta cut this one because it's fraying on me. I didn't realize how much this ribbon was going to fray. It's the first time I've used this one. This one's Stampin' Up! Ribbon. But it's pretty, and it's got gold, and we all like bling. Okay, let me loosen that one up. Alright. I feel like I'm being super slow, you guys. I'm so sorry. 
But I hope you guys are having a great time. Okay, then we have our bag. Look how pretty. Okay. So then, we get that part. Then we have our tag. If you guys are still working on your ribbon part, it's okay. I'm just kind of... The flower part we've already put together on our card. And so I'm just going to put together my flower now. Okay. See, we have that piece of scrap. And holes I need to poke through my flower. Okay. Hang tight for just a minute. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. So now, poke my holes through. So this, we have two big flowers and one little flower. So kind of like the flowers we put together on our card, the big flowers with the three tips opposite direction, and then little flower goes on top. Same thing like we did with our card. But dimensional goes on the bottom flower. Dimensional. I would be embarrassed if you guys saw all this mess on my desk right now. Oh my goodness. This only happens when I craft by myself, I assure you. I never do this in front of everyone. Make these big messes. Why am I telling you guys this? I don't know. Okay. So dimensional. Stick that in the middle of my flower. Okay, so I have on this flower the three tips facing up. I'm going to take this one and make sure my three tips are facing downward. And I'm going to just stick that right on there. Okay. And then take our scrap piece, cut a little square. And that's going to get glued to the middle of my flower. I need to get another bottle of glue out. This one's almost empty. Put my little white scrap piece in the middle. Actually, it's a little too big. Am I still alive, you guys? Let's see. Somebody said I they lost me. Um, am I still here? Somebody tell me yes or no. I don't know. Hello, can you hear me, Mom? <laughs> we gotta have fun. So, in case I'm still alive, I'm gluing, putting a dab of glue in the middle of this flower. Anybody here? Anybody with me? Okay, let me see what's going on here. Hmm. I 
Everybody here? I'll be right back. Buzz is back. Hmm? 